Pete Calandra here. On today's video, I'd like to do a brief introduction in a little bit more detail about a topic that I introduced in a couple of recent videos that I call Intervallic Harmony. The piece I improvised at the opening of this video is based upon this concept. And before we go any further, while I use this quite often in my work, it's not meant to be the end all and be all of harmonic systems. It really should be a complementary concept or an adjunct to studying four-part voice leading, traditional four-part voice leading. Before we get into the lesson, if you like this video, give a thumbs up. For more content, please subscribe, and to be notified, ring that bell. Please leave any comments or questions down below, and in the description box, there'll be a link to download the PDF of this lesson I've prepared. So thanks so much for watching, and let's get right into it. At the first measure of our PDF, we have a simple C major seventh chord spelled. One way of thinking about this is that you have stacked intervals. So we have C and E, which is a major third, and then G and B, which is another major third. We also have C and G, which is a major fifth, and E and B, which is a major fifth. When you're learning chords, one thing to do is to learn all the inversions. An inversion is when you take the bottom note of a chord and transpose it up an octave. So you should learn all of the basic seventh chords, major seventh, dominant seventh, minor seventh, half diminished seventh, and diminished seventh in all 12 keys in each hand. So just practice it, get your metronome going. I'm doing this up a fourth and down a fifth. And do that with both hands. Slowly with a metronome, maybe at about 80 for the quarter note, and each one of those is a quarter note. 15 or 20 minutes a day four times a week, three times a week, steady, slow, patient, and detailed practice. Now, if we take our third inversion, which is this right here, we can look at that in a couple of ways. It's two different intervals this time. It's a minor second and a major third, but, and it's a major third and a sixth, but, if we take that second note from the top, which is this E, and drop it an octave lower, we'll get this kind of a voicing. And here we have two fifths, E and B, and then C and G, right? When you learn this kind of a voicing in jazz, or if you're studying jazz harmony or big band arranging, this is called a drop two voicing. It's an open voicing as opposed to the close position voicing of that. One way to practice this and get it into your fingers, your ears, and your brain is to practice diatonically. So if we take this chord and we just go up and down in a scale fashion. And then back down. So practice this two ways, I would say. One with three notes in your right hand and one note in your left hand, and one with both no with excuse me, and then with two notes in each hand. And then again, twelve keys, right?
G flat or F sharp. The idea of this is to get fluid in all the keys so that you don't have to think about this stuff. You just hear sound and you know how to produce it. And that's only done through repetition and um, slow, careful practice. Don't try to win a race with this slow and steady. Internalize it and learn what you learn correctly instead of fudging and making mistakes. All right, so another way that you can work on this is to create diatonic patterns. So I have something, you could practice your close position chords like this, right? And I'm just going up a fourth and down a fifth. Or you could use some of these interval voicings. So we could take two of them. That's our first one with fifth. And this is the, the drop two and four. And what I've done with this, instead of it being this kind of a voicing here, I've taken that top note and I've dropped it down an octave so that we get this, which is actually the second inversion drop two. And so now I can create a pattern like at measure 17, which is the third system in this PDF. So C major 7th, F major 7th, B half diminished 7th, E minor 7th, A, D, G, C, just right through the key. Now, another thing that you can do that will be beneficial to you is to work on hearing the individual voices. You could just play them. But... You can also work on performing them and start to get into your hands the technique of being able to play any note in the chord a little bit louder to bring it out. And one of the ways that you do that is to emphasize it. And what I like to do is to do an eighth note rhythm where I play the melody and hold it for a quarter note and then on the next eighth note play the rest of the chord softer. So let me show you what I mean by that. Work on smoothness and consistency. My melody note was consistently at one volume and my chord on the offbeat was, were also consistently at a softer volume. All of them internally consistent across. Like the melody wasn't, it was. And the chords were the similar soft, similar way they were soft. Then do it with the bottom note the bass note. The, al uh, the, the alto note. And then the tenor. Again, the object here is to really learn this material and not just learn it physically, although learning it physically is very important, but learning it orally, A-U-R-A-L-L-Y. Learning what every voice in that line, every inner line, every voice, what it all sounds like. Next, at measure 23 or the fourth system in the PDF, we've got mixing interval motion and modes. So instead of it being 
fourth up, fifth down for the root motion of the chords or that kind of sequence I've got there where it's all just a pattern over and over again. We're going to mix that up. And we're going to go back and forth between the major and the minor mode, although this example is mostly minor. But let's see what I mean. So at measure 23. So I've got C major 7th to C minor 7th, A flat major 7th, F minor 7th, G minor 7th, F minor 7th, C minor 7th, B flat major 7th, and C major 7th. And again, you could do the same thing you did with the last bit in terms of hearing the different voices, but you can also make up an accompaniment figure, something maybe as simple as. Make up your own patterns. I just took a simple little line. and harmonized it using these principles. And we're only talking about fifths and fourths right now. There's so many other combinations you can do. Let's take a look at the next example where I do a variation on the one at measure 17, or the third system, and I'm adding some chromatic tones to the chords. So let's take a look at that. C major 7th, F major 7th with a sharp 5, B diminished 7th, C major 7th, A minor 7th, D minor 7th flat 5, B, ma uh, B diminished 7th, C major 7th with a raised 5th or sharp 5th, F major 7th, B diminished 7th, E minor 7th, F major 7th, D half diminished seventh, A flat or G sharp diminished seventh, C sixth, or this could be thought of as a B diminished seventh leading to the C major uh, sixth, which is two fourths. Experiment, keep a diary, a manuscript, or get a cheap app for your iPad or your computer where you can you can use score, I think is free. Write down, keep a diary of all your chords. You can even just write them down on, on regular paper, right? Figure out a way where you can keep a diary, keep track and create your own chord voicings and come up with your own stuff. So I'm gonna continue on with this and do some another lesson on this in a couple of weeks. I have a few other videos planned before then. If you like this, give a thumbs up. For more content, subscribe. Ring that bell to be notified, share. There's a link for a PDF of this stuff in the description box below. I've been Pete Calandra. Thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna play something out uh, using these principles and expanding on them a little bit for a minute or two, improvise something, and I will catch you on the next one.